How to Increase Jenkins Login Timeout. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.452.1. Internally, Jenkins uses Jetty as its servlet container. Now I can tell you that Jetty's default session timeout is 30 minutes, but let me show you how we can prove that. I'm logged in as an administrator on this controller, so I'm gonna to go to Manage Jenkins. I'm gonna scroll down to Script Console, and I'm going to run this couple of lines. I'm first gonna import from Stapler, and then I'm gonna say from get session, what is my max inactive interval and dividing by 60. We'll take a look at the details of that in just a minute. What we can see here is that value is 30. That is 30 minutes. So how do we end up here? There is a link to a knowledge base article down in the description. Let's go and take a look at that. We're talking about customizing the Jenkins login session timeout. If we go ahead and scroll down a little bit, what we can see here is there are two arguments that are available to us that we can use when starting up our controller. One is session timeout and one is session eviction. Now for session timeout, the default is 30 minutes. That's what we just saw. And what that means is a user will be logged out after this amount of time, no matter what. So after 30 minutes, someone's gonna be logged out. But we also have session eviction. This is set in seconds, whereas the session timeout is set in minutes. And what this means is a user will be logged out after this time if their session is idle. For both of these, session timeout and session eviction, they're both 30 minutes by default. But let's say we want to go ahead and change those values. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the way that should be done using systemctl edit. Now, for our example, we're gonna stick with the example that's in this knowledge base article. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna have our active sessions timeout to two hours, so that's session timeout 120. Remember, session timeout is in minutes, so 60 times two is 120. And then we want the idle sessions set to one hour. Now, in this case, there's 3,600 seconds in one hour, 60 times 60. So let's go ahead and copy this value right here. I am inside of my controller. So let's go over to our controller. Now, what if I didn't know what values are available to me to start up my Jenkins controller? Well, one way we can do that is by looking at how the controller is actually started in the first place. I'm gonna use PS and I'm going to grep for Jenkins. What we can see here is I'm running Java. We have a lot of dash D parameters. Then we finally get up to dash jar and then a reference to our war file, our Jenkins war file. And then there's some other arguments after that fact. Now, what we'll be doing is we'll be adding in our session arguments after web root and HTTP port. But how do I know what values are available to me? How did I know I could use session timeout other than looking at that knowledge base article? Well, here's how we can do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type java dash jar. I'm going to copy the location of my war file, and I'm going to type dash dash help. So this gives me the help for starting up my Jenkins controller from the war file. And what we can see here is there's a lot of different arguments that are available to us, but the two that we're interested in are the two that are listed as session timeout and session eviction. Now you'll notice here on session eviction, there's actually a couple of other values. We also have a negative one for never evict and zero sets it to evict on exit. Now, again, for our example, we're going to stick with our session timeout of 120 and our session eviction of 3,600. So I'm gonna go into system edit, Jenkins. Let's go down to our Jenkins ops. I'm gonna to go to the end of this and paste in session timeout equal to 120 and session eviction equal to 3,600. Now, in order for this to take effect, we're gonna to have to restart our controller. So we'll say sudo systemctl restart Jenkins. If we go back over to our controller, we'll see that Jenkins is restarting. Let's go ahead and log back in, and let's do the same thing that we did at the beginning of the video. We'll go to Manage Jenkins. We'll go ahead and scroll down to Script Console and run our script again. And when we click on Run, this time we see the value of 120, which matches what we were expecting for our session timeout. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.